Hello, welcome to South Dublin Library Storytime. Today we have The Children of Lear retold by Laura Ruth Marr and it's published by O'Brien Press. On a little green island in days of old, a story of magic and courage was told. There once stood a fortress, four children lived there along with their father, the mighty King Lear. The children were cheerful, they laughed and they played. Fenula was eldest and next there came A. Fikra was tallest and smallest was Khan. They hopped, skipped and jumped from dusk until dawn. One day, while the children played hurling outside, Lear looked at them laughing. It filled him with pride. He gazed at the sun and the birds in the sky, but was suddenly startled by a strange passerby. They're covered in rags and bent like a spoon. Lear expected no visitors on this bright afternoon. He became wary when this wanderer appeared, but he was brave and courageous. There was nothing he feared. From out of the window, he yelled, who goes there? And the stranger stepped forward and let down her red hair. Her rags disappeared. She so tall, straight and narrow. Her beauty pierced Lear like a fast moving arrow. A woman, said Lear, here at my fortress. I'm always quite careful not to give out my address. When the children are over, they were truly excited. A new mother, they thought, and they became quite delighted. I am Eva, she said, and I have travelled so far. I've heard all about the great king that you are. As soon as Lear saw her, his heart filled with love. It fluttered so fast like the wings of a dove. At once they were married. Now Eva was queen, but beneath her great beauty lay a heart that was mean. Lear's love for his children made her seethe in dismay. Her hatred and jealousy grew day by day. The children tried hard to keep joyous and glad. Their father was happy, but their new man made them sad. Be grave and courageous like father, they'd say. Look after each other. We'll all be okay. One day Eva said kindly, come children, let's play. A game by the lake. It's a bright sunny day. The children all thought maybe at last Eva really did love them and they ran very fast. Down at the shore where Eva was standing with a wand in her hand, she became quite demanding. Into the water, all of you go. I won't say it again. But the children yelled no. She lifted her arms and started to speak strange magic words that gave Fikra a beak. Next with Fanula, then it was Khan. Last but not least, A's nose was gone. As swans you will live for 900 years until a sweet sound should ring in your ears. Not any old sound, but the toll of a bell. We'll finish my magic and rupture the spell. There's a man with great power, he's one of a kind. The sorcerer you want, but he's one you won't find. Do not seek, do not search, for he cannot be found. He'll make himself known when the time comes around. Wings, white feathers, a beak and webbed feet. The children were outraged by Eva's deceit. They shouted for Lear. They called in a flurry. Lear heard a kerfuffle and he started to hurry. Come, father, please help us. You cannot trust her. Where are my children? said Lear in a fluster. They're gone at last. Now we can be together. Eva mischievously grinned holding on to a feather. The king, he got angry. Oh, he got mad. He used all his powers and magic he had to curse his wife, Aoife, this hateful vile queen, into an air demon, no more to be seen. Lear started to cry and he ran straight to the water. These birds do not like, like my sons and my daughter. Khan swam to his father. He beckoned the others. Swans, they may be, but still sisters and brothers. Do not worry, father. Please do not weep. We will not despair, for our love is too deep. Be brave and courageous, as you always said. Lear dried up his tears and smiled at them instead. Three hundred years spent in the lake by their home, knowing full well they had further to roam. When their father had passed and turned into a star, the children decided to fly pretty far. Across the sea of moil for 300 more, up high in the sky through harsh winds they would soar. Their wings were vast, they enjoyed taking flight. This part about being a swan was all right. Through this treacherous weather they flew on and on, brave Fenula, Fikra, A and Con. 
till at last through a gap in the clouds was the shore of Inishglora, the island they were searching for. 300 years left, they would joyfully sing as they huddled together tail, beak and wing. The weeks turned to months, the months into years, when they heard a faint sound that would bring them to tears. It wasn't, it can't be, they said quick to each other. But I heard it again, quick go, said their brother. They hurried and scurried, they swam and they flew to the top of the island. It couldn't be true. There, standing tall with his bell in his hand, was Maku, the most powerful man in the land. He raised his bell high and he rang it out loud. All at once they were wrapped in a thick magical cloud. Their spell had been broken, the children were free. They couldn't contain their excitement and glee. Four sides of relief as they started to change, being children again, was a nice kind of strange. The magic surrounded them, lifted them high, just enough time to say thank you, goodbye. And there among the stars, they lived happily ever after, back with their father, all smiles, love and laughter. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.